Welcome back. My name is Gideon Shabib, and I'm going to continue on to part two of step three, creating a scale form HUD for UDK. Um, up to this point, we've created a uh, basic background with a single button that has an up, over, and down functionality. Uh, we have set up uh, the projects that will export properly for UDK. And then we've also got our timeline set in such a way that we can organize our information to expand the menu if necessary. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add functionality that's going to let our button talk to the game or to the rest of the script if you wanted to have a multi-frame menu system. So to start off, we're going to create action script in a new layer. We're going to call that layer actions. Selecting the first frame of the layer, go to window, select actions, or press F9. I have some code here that I've already prepared. Uh, I'll walk you through it step by step on what's in the functionality going on, what the functionality is that uh, we're presenting, and then tell you what parts you're going to want to customize. And I just want to make a disclaimer here that this is the most basic functionality that any button will have in, a, in the engine. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do. There's a lot of tutorials that you can reference. Uh, I'll show you a reference for that later uh, before I close out this video. But as we start the script here, uh, something you're going to need in a global actions label for all of your uh, flash files that are going to be used in scale form is this global gfx extensions equals true. This is going to enable action script to be converted into unreal script, which is what scale form is for. Uh, it's for using these gfx extensions which add functionality to flash as well as allow it to communicate with the game. Uh, we create a function that does some something that we need to do. Uh, I've created here an fs command, which is going to send a basic uh, piece of information uh, that will call a custom action. Uh, this will be like a keyword that will be referenced inside of Kismet. It's defined by me here, but you can put whatever you want inside of that as long as you reference the exact same capitalization and spelling inside of Kismet. And the second parameter is the argument that I'm going to pass into this command. Down here, uh, we tell what object to listen for this function call. So I have a start button that we labeled early on in step one, or part one of this, uh, this segment. And we're going to add event listener to that button so that on a click, which is a keyword, this, talking about the start button, is what's clicked. We're going to call this function, press start. So this press start is exactly the same as this function name here. So when the start button is clicked, we're going to press start and send this command to the console. And then we have stop. This is going to keep the timeline right on the frame that you are working on now. So if you have a multi-frame timeline where you have options, screen, settings, game mode, you know, each one in its own frame, this will keep it from scrolling over to each other one and looping back so that the player can actually see what uh, menu screen that they're working on. So now that we have that functionality in there, I'm going to press F9 and close the actions window. Nothing inside of the stage has changed, but the functionality has definitely uh, come, come to fruition for the button. If we move this out of the way, we can see the UDK uh, FX Media Player console. As I click on this button, it's going to send a command to load map DM deck. And it'll do this every time I call it. If we were actually in game, this would be loading the map uh, DM deck. But because we're just in the console, it's letting you know with this blue text that it is properly reading the FS command, sending an FS callback, and it understands that these are the separate parameters. So as far as we're concerned, all of our syntax is right, and we've created a functional menu system, uh, a single button menu system for Unreal. What you want to do at this point is save your file, control S or save, and then you're going to want to publish. And make sure that you're publishing in the correct folder again inside of your UDK game flash package name, group name, and you save your FLA and your SWF to the same file. For additional references on what you can use with Scaleform, uh, visit the Epic Games uh, UDN forums. They have a huge wealth of knowledge that you should definitely check out. The Scaleform technical guide is what I used to create this particular button. Uh, but there are many other functions and classes that are going to be referenced in there that will help you create really robust menus for each individual game that you'll be working on. And Toots Plus will help you get started. If you have any questions about uh, Flash, 
There are, there are a great many number of free tutorials on there that'll help you get started with the basic interface all the way through to 3D effects and importing assets from other programs into Flash. And of course, Adobe.com, a great reference for both Photoshop and, uh, and Flash. Uh, the art that was used for this demo was provided by Charlene Freda and additional technical references by Jacob Miller and Rui Ma. Uh, the next video in this series is by Jacob Miller and we are going to be looking into preparing a UDK menu in Kismet.